this is David for Big Bits, and in this video we're going to continue our series on the trading view development with PineScript for creating our own indicators and much more. So in the last video we continued our efforts on our triple moving average script that we've been working on and we've gotten a lot done on it and now we're going to move on to adding labels onto our indicator and the labels we're going to add are for crossovers and it's going to give us quite a bit of information on what the crossovers are for here you can see the label shows the 50 SMA crossed over the 100 SMA so we're going to be able to get a lot of information just by looking at the chart with the labels and we don't have to really guess where the crossovers occurred we're going to know exactly where they occurred because there's a huge X right here with uh, all the information that we need. So, uh, one of the other things I do want to cover before we go into this video, I, I think I mentioned in the last video we're going to talk about functions. That's actually not in this video. It's in the next one with forecasting where we really clean up a lot of the code as well. So, uh, if you're here for the functions and forecasting, that's in the next video. But let's go ahead and get started talking about this indicator. So, uh, it's pretty much the same one you've seen in the last one, except we've added some more options. Let's go ahead and look at the inputs so you can see kind of what we've added here. Now you can see also there is a uh, checkbox to show whether or not the particular moving average should be visible or not. And you'll notice when you look at the crossovers here, if it's involved in a crossover, it's going to hide the crossover. It's pretty neat. Uh, if you aren't thinking about it and you aren't uh, well prepared in your code, then there's a good chance the way the PineScript works, if you don't think about uh, not showing the labels, you could easily forget to do that. So that's just something to keep in mind if you do your own indicators, is if you are going to be hiding and showing these things, make sure you consider uh, that you should also hide any labels associated with those as well if that's what you want now if you still want them to show up say if you wanted to hide this line and you still wanted to see where the crossovers would occur you're perfectly welcome to do that but for our purposes our purposes we're not going to do that but the other option is say we want to see all three lines but we don't want these crossovers getting in the way you know maybe we just want to look at a nice clean chart or maybe they're hard to read uh, so we can just uncheck this one and we can hide our crossovers. And I'm going to show you how to do all of this uh, in the code in just a moment. Let's turn those back on. Okay, perfect. Now we can really uh, begin on the code here. Now you'll notice I have added a couple more options on the moving averages. We've added the double and triple exponential moving average, uh, which we'll show you in just a moment. And we've also, of course, added those inputs for whether or not the moving average will be visible. And we also added the input for whether or not we should show the crosses on the chart. Now you'll notice all of these new inputs uh, are booleans or bools. Okay, the default value is true, which means they're going to be checked. Uh, if you're not a developer, a boolean is just a, a checkbox. Uh, if you're working with like Excel or something, it's either a yes or a no. I mean, it's just really one or the other. You know, it's either on or off. It's like a light switch. Okay, so going back into our uh, logical statements here with the moving averages, you'll see the double exponential moving average and the triple exponential moving average. And uh, if you've watched the last few videos, you'll know that whatever the last line is in the if statement is the value that's going to be assigned to the original if statement. So the MA1, uh, even though there's two lines of code here, will only be assigned the value from this line of code. So I, I know I've discussed this before, but we didn't actually have two lines of code to show you that example. And let's go ahead and actually change it to a, a double exponential moving average just to show you. There we go. So the double exponential moving average, you can see that it assigned it the value that was here. And we're charting our double exponential moving average now. Okay, simple enough. Let's continue on skip past all of the other moving average code. All right, so this is where we really have a lot of information to cover, uh, quite a lot actually. So 
what we're doing is on the chart we're showing our labels the labels are there to show specific information I think I actually have this up already uh, the URL here uh, that I've added in the comments I have that open here and you can see information about the labels and you kind of get an idea of what they're for and all of the different options and parameters that you can use to set with those now you can set specifically where on the chart to set them so that's important to keep in mind for later on uh, and you'll understand why in this particular video I think we're only going to be working with the Y location we're only really worried about where it is on the current uh, bar <laughs> we're not worried with the x-axis which would be a different bar uh, in the future in the past when you're looking at a chart but one thing we do need to keep in mind for sure is the color the style uh, the text color and the size these all have something to do with how they are displayed on the chart so let's look at the style let's see where is that oh it's label dot style let's look at set style uh, it doesn't give you that information here so let's just go back to our labels and I'll actually just show you on the chart some of the different ones so for example we are using the X cross but if we wanted to change the style we could so let's see this is the 50 over the 100 that would be the 1 over the 2 excellent okay that's this one let's change the style to arrow up and you'll see this one should become an arrow that points up to it should take it a moment Oh no, that's the cross under. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong one. I just sat there waiting for it to update. I was starting to panic that it didn't work. But yet, uh, I actually did the wrong one. So that should have been an arrow down. It'll make a little bit more sense if it's an arrow down. It takes a second to compile these. Okay, there we go. You can see the arrow down. Uh, but our location is set on the crossover. So let's change that back to a cross. And you can actually see uh, the differences in the different settings here. So we have our color, which is the shape. The color is for the shape. The text color, obviously, for your text, that's set to red. Our style is set to a cross. And our size is set to small. There is an auto size, but it looked like way too small here, so I had to set it manually. And you can play around with that as much as you need to. So let's go back into actually determining whether or not we should put one of these labels on the chart so we have to determine when these crossovers occur obviously we don't want to show a crossover when there isn't a crossover so the first thing we need to do is we need to put a logical statement on here now this is great because we can actually use logic to determine whether or not we need to place something on the chart now we stored a variable on the input for showing the crosses so we're going to check and make sure all these conditions are true before we actually place these on the chart so show crosses is the one that you know every crossover has to have this be true because it controls all of them remember that's uh, make sure you can see that perfectly good uh, show crosses is this option and we want to have this enable and disable all of them so if you have it checked it needs to be true or yes on all of the crossovers that we're doing now you can see there is also MA1 visible so we also have to have not only show crosses but we also have to have MA1 visible true or set to yes as well check okay uh, since we are working with a crossover we need the second line set as well so is the MA2 visible yes it is and there's more to it we need to make sure it actually crossed over so there is a built-in function for cross under and we want to check if the MA1 here crossed under the MA2 
And now if all of these are true, then we can create our label and apply it to the chart. Now let me take a look and see, I forgot to add this into the comments. Maybe I'll do that now. And that is a link to this particular built-in function. And you can see this is just part of the TradingView PineScript built-in function. You can see whether something crossed under or crossed above uh, another set of data. So that's important to use for this one, obviously, since we're doing crossovers. It might be good for other indicators that you're doing as well for other things. Maybe you only want to uh, display something or maybe you want to change the color of something when there's a crossover. You don't necessarily want to have a new label. Maybe when uh, the green line crosses above here, maybe it turns bright green. And when it goes below, maybe then it's another color. That These are just options. Or maybe you fill in the colors between these. I'm not entirely sure you can change the color of the line from segment to segment. Maybe you can. But uh, what's really important is that you know that you can do conditional changes here. And playing around with that kind of stuff might be helpful to make your indicator look better. Now, now that we know that all of these conditions are true and we have crossed under in this particular instance, we create our label, and I've already went over all this, but for the text that we're going to use, we can actually use something called toString. This is another built-in function. Probably need to add this one as well. And it's just going to take some sort of value that you have that isn't already a string, and it's going to convert it into text. Um, if you're a developer, uh, we use the word string, but it's just text. That, that's a simple way to think about it. So when you do a two string, it converts your period, your MA1 period to text. So you can see the 50 period, all right? It's just the number 50. And then we concatenate the string, which means we add other text to it. We add a space, and then we add in the type. The type was already a string, so we didn't have to call that function two string see 50 space SMA and that's the type we had selected and then of course we know that this is happening because it crossed under because that's the function we used and then we just do the same thing for the second SMA and you have this wonderful text that tells you exactly what's going on on this crossover and this might be useful to tell you other information okay so one thing that you'll notice is uh, when you do this the first time the label might get plotted at the wrong location. So it might be plotted on the close instead of on the actual indicator where you want it. So to make sure you get it where you need it on the chart, you need to make sure you specify where on the y-axis you want it if the default value that it gives you isn't okay. Now for me, I think the default value was the close, so it would have showed the crossover down here, but that doesn't make any sense. The crossover actually occurred up here. So what we had to do was once we created the label, now we had to assign it to a variable so that we could access its built-in functions later. We would call label.setY, and we would tell it what label we want to change the Y axis for, and it would set it at the MA value. Now you can calculate the average or the distance between the lines, but it's not really necessary as long as you have a general idea on the chart. Now if you need to be super specific, you can specify a specific number. Uh, don't think that you can't, it's just it's not really necessary for this particular indicator, so I didn't do it. Now, for that, we go through all of the different options for crossovers and cross-unders for all of the indicator or, or all of the uh, moving averages that we've added. Now if you wanted to add yet another moving average and be an MA4, then you would need to make sure you consider all of the scenarios for that and apply that uh, in this section as well. So maybe we'll get to that eventually. We're not going to do that now. And then of course we still need to plot our moving averages. Now, you'll notice when we did our logical conditioning or <laughs> our logical conditions here, uh, you'll notice we checked to make sure that the moving average was visible. Now, when we go to plot the moving average, we also want to do a conditional check to make sure that the moving average is visible. All right? And this is pretty much an if statement. So, uh, it's going to check what came before it and make sure that this or the set of conditions, and you can use a set of conditions, not just one, are 
true. And if it is true, question mark, this is what it's going to use. This is the value that it's going to use. However, if it's not true, then this is the value that's going to use, which is not applicable, and it's not going to draw it. And we can show you that just by simply turning off the different lines, making them uh, unchecked for visible status. Now, hopefully, I know there was a lot this video, but there really was a lot to cover in this one compared to the other ones. Hopefully, you, you've gained a lot and we are going to move into functions, but I'm really excited for the next video because it is about forecasting values at the end of the moving average. So if the moving average for the 200 here was to stop at this dot, it would show us where it expected the moving average to be if the price were to stay flat. But I also have a couple of other things that I haven't seen on any other uh, scripts so far. And uh, now don't get me wrong, I haven't went through every single script, but this is something I just kind of thought of when I did it. I've also done something for the forecasting to where we can apply a bullish or a bearish forecast. Now, when you forecast out, a lot of the ones I've seen have just either went with the fact that the price is going to stay neutral or it's going to continue going down at the slope that it was before. Now, uh, to me, that doesn't really seem super helpful uh, to not have different options to see where it would be because if you're forecasting a moving average in the future, what you're really trying to do is see how the impact of losing the previous candles will impact it based on different scenarios. Now, neutral is great uh, because it lets you see where it would go just without any new information. Okay, now the uh, bullish and bearish ones, you're going to like these because it's going to allow you to say whether you want your forecast bias to be bullish, bearish, or neutral. And then if you choose bullish, it will take the average true range of the last 14 candles, and it will use that to increment the price on the forecasted. So uh, say, for example, we forecasted the price to go up in a bullish manner. We would get the average true range 14 candles back, and it would plot the forecast for this 200 moving average as if it would move up by that amount every single candle uh, to the end of the forecast. Whereas if it was neutral, it would go sideways, and if it was bearish, it would go down. Now, there is another thing that I really like about it is that you can do a magnitude. So if you think that the average true range was too high or too low, uh, it's going to multiply that uh, average true range by the magnitude, and you can actually tell it if it should go uh, very bullish, like nearly even straight up or nearly even straight down for a bearish example, and you can get a very wide array of uh, examples of what the forecast could be, which is really neat. I'm excited about that one. Uh, now, if you like this indicator that we've done and you like the idea of the forecasting indicator, please check out my uh, TradingView profile. I have all kinds of scripts on there already, uh, including the one that we're going to be doing next, which is the forecasting one. I have another one uh, that I'm working on past this, which is going to allow you to select different resolutions or different time frames for the different lines. So there's a lot to look forward to in the videos. If you like this video, please hit like. If you like learning about uh, trading and trading view and indicators and strategies, please subscribe. Uh, I've also been doing some live streams, so please check out the channel, subscribe, and just keep coming back. I appreciate you viewing, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thanks.